In previous lessons, we've discussed how mutations occur randomly in our genetic information. Usually, these mutations don't have an effect on the organism, but sometimes mutations can cause both positive or negative changes. Mutations are the reason why organisms have different traits from each other. Today's video will talk about how those changes lead to a process called evolution. One person who was interested in the differences between organisms was Charles Darwin. He traveled the world observing and collecting organisms and even found fossils of older organisms. The map below shows his journey. He started in England, made his way south to South America, stopping by a group of islands off the coast called the Galapagos Islands, then crossing the Atlantic Ocean to Australia and parts of Africa before returning home. He noticed three patterns between organisms. Organisms vary globally and locally, meaning that there are differences between organisms around the world, but also within a certain location, and also that species change over time. He developed a scientific theory of evolution that explains how organisms evolved or changed over long periods of time, and that organisms came from ancestors. When you think of a theory, what words or phrases come to mind? Outside the science world, a theory might mean an idea or a guess, but in science, a theory is an explanation that has been backed up by many experiments, investigations, and observations. As time goes on, the evolutionary theory continues to develop and expand because of new information. Not everyone agreed with Charles Darwin's ideas. John Baptiste Lamarck had different ideas of how organisms change over time. Let's look at these giraffes to illustrate his ideas. He believed that ancestors of giraffes all had short necks, but they had a habit of eating leaves high up on trees. As they reached for leaves that are high up on the trees, their necks became stretched and got longer. In other words, he believed that organisms could change their own traits to work better in their environment. He also believed that giraffes whose necks had stretched, we call this an acquired trait, would be able to pass it on to their offspring, which caused today's modern giraffes to have long necks. Darwin's ideas were different from Lamarck's. Let's look at these giraffes to illustrate his ideas. As you can see in the picture, the ancestors of giraffes mostly had short necks. There were some giraffes whose necks were longer than average, though. In other words, there were variations or differences between giraffes' necks, which were caused by random mutations. Those who had longer necks had an advantage of eating higher leaves on trees, and those who could not reach their food died. Those with longer necks survived and were able to pass on their traits of long necks to their offspring, and after many generations, that's what caused today's giraffes to mostly have longer necks. This process is called natural selection. Natural selection is a process where organisms with variations or differences that help them to survive in their environment are able to pass them on to their offspring. Let's break down his ideas of natural selection even more. First, he believed organisms varied in traits. The picture shown is of a tree with two moths. Are you able to see both of them? What is a variation between the two moths? The variation is the body colors. One is light colored and the other is dark colored. Which moth will have a higher chance of surviving? The darker colored moth has a higher chance of survival. Its darker color can help it to blend in with the dark colored tree. The light colored moth is easily seen by its predators and would probably be eaten first. 
The dark color of the moth is its adaptation or trait that helps it to survive. Since the organism is able to survive, it can reproduce more and pass on this adaptation to its offspring. According to Darwin, differences in adaptations affect an individual's fitness. Fitness doesn't refer to how fast or strong an organism is. It refers to how well an organism can survive and how well it can reproduce in its environment. Let's practice these, these ideas of natural selection with a different situation. In nature, organisms usually produce many offspring. For instance, this grasshopper can lay more than 200 eggs at a time, but not all of the eggs survive and become adult grasshoppers. What are some reasons why the eggs might not grow into adults? Changes in weather, predators, habitat destruction, or disease are just some of the reasons why the offspring may not survive. Because of this, overproduction of organisms is needed. The grasshoppers that do survive show a variation in traits. What variation is seen between the grasshoppers? The variation or difference in traits would be their body color. Some grasshoppers are yellow while others are green. Which adaptation allows the grasshoppers to survive? The adaptation or trait that helps them to survive would be the green body color. It helps them to blend in with their environment so they are less visible to their predators. Which grasshopper has a higher fitness? Since the green grasshopper can blend in with its environment, it has a higher fitness. In other words, it, can be, it has a better chance of surviving, and because of this, it can reproduce more. What changes in the population might you expect to happen after many generations? Over time, green grasshoppers would be more common than yellow grasshoppers. Since those with a green body color survive and reproduce more, they're able to pass this trait to their offspring. Since those with yellow bodies don't survive well, there will be less individuals to survive and pass on the trait of yellow bodies. This whole process describes how natural selection works. Natural selection occurs in the environment on its own. An organism does not have to control have control of this process since they are born with or without these special traits. Artificial selection or selective breeding is different. It's a process where humans choose characteristics of plants, animals, or other organisms. They will take the parents with the desired traits and cross or mate them to produce offspring. This practice is common with dog breeders. Some people will produce offspring from a particular type of breed, like Labradors. But what happens if you like the traits of a Labrador, but you're allergic to its hair? Certain breeders will mate a Labrador and a Poodle to create Labradoodles. Labradoodles share similarities of Labrador's features, but have the hair of a Poodle, which doesn't shed, which would be good for a person who is allergic to dog's hair. This happens with our food too. Scientists have modified fruits or vegetables based on a certain taste, ability to survive in different environments, and many other features.